So, uh, slightly to my surprise, we were the first and only people here. I guess that maybe is what you get for a Tuesday where the fishing report is actually kind of average, so maybe not surprising. But here we are, Waitawa Regional Park. Good little place, just looking around to come down for a camp. I think we'll be bringing the kids down here shortly as well. So we're just walking, well, I'm not really sure how far, but we're walking towards the wharf now. And really it's just a uh, good excuse to get out and get the lines wet. These days I tend to wake up at 5, 5.30 regardless of what's going on really. So I might as well get up and stretch the legs, get some fresh air. I don't know, it's going to be cloudy but the sunrise sometimes when it's cloudy is pretty good anyway. Oh no, danger. Danger signs. Dodging rocks. The lifeguards. So yeah, that's a bit shit, guys. Um, once I've got the water on the line, I've got a rubbish bag, so I'll pick up some of that trash and take with. Um, one, take your shit with you. Two, there's probably a good commentary here that we could do with some more permanent rod holders because that's the result. However, we could also just have something like that get some black piping, screw those on there, done once, and it'll look a hell of a lot better. Yeah, dinner tables. That absolutely stinks of rotten fish. Huh. So yeah, it's a bit sad, but we'll get a water in and see if there's any fish here. I don't know, does that look fishy? Probably overdue to get some, uh, get this guy respooled. Casting with it at the moment is a little bit dubious. However, I do love the bait runner. It just sort of appeals to the way I fish. Maybe that's just meaning I'm a lazy fisherman, but um, bait runner with circle hooks on it is perfect for the rod holder style fishing. So what I'll often do is set this up with something on it. Bait. And just cast it out and just let it be, stop faffing with it. And then use the smaller rod I've got over there to do something a little bit more active to keep my idle hands busy. Just right on that edge of threatening terrain. So the weather report reckons it won't. So I think we'll probably end up with a shower or two. And that will hopefully be it using the salted baits from Coastal Baits again. And what's awesome with these, I just keep a bucket of them at home now, and if I've got to decide to go for a fish like this, even though it's pretty unplanned, I've still got some bait that I can just grab a handful of. And we're away, and it just holds together a hell of a lot better than any of the frozen, unfrozen, refrozen stuff. Uh, guys, I'm not claiming to be a professional or a expert or even a moderately skilled fisherman. Um, I'm just working on some pretty basic principles of make sure your hooks are exposed so you can hook the fish. Make sure your hook size matches your baits. And your bait size matches whatever fish you're after. So on this rod we've basically got, well, it's probably one of the worst examples ever of an FG not tying, but by the by. 
Uh, we're just going to stray line, but just not enough weight and the wind today blowing even the light grade about too much. So we're going to put a teeny bit of weight on there and throw it back in. It's really just a second line. We're going to explore and see what happens with it. And now we wait. And wait. Something. What have we got? Oh, a undersized snapper. I think well, they might not even be undersized. No, right, look at them. Oh god. No, he's undersized. Oh baby. Come here, baby. Mm -hmm. still yeah. hey, 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 As an aside, the Ocean Angler small box is, um, ooh, ouch, come on buddy, okay, is slightly, oh god, it's probably nearly big enough. Yeah, fuck that. Oh well, you come back up and I keep you. A bit of stinky squid this time. I love my apps, another great app, NZ Fishing. Gives you all your fishing rules. And you load up your favorites. And it'll tell you what size you can have and minimum size. So where we are, 30 centimeters, what we're looking at. We're on the west coast, 27 centimeters. So 30 centimeters is what we're going for. Oh. So that was a much quicker hit on squid, but whether that's just because I put the bait in front of the fish's nose or whether they prefer it. Bites so far have been on the um, lighter line, which probably also is an argument for fishing by the structure because I'm not casting it out as far. Whereas this, which was cast out, I've got absolutely nothing. I'll we'll just change over, go to Squiddy on this guy as well. Cast in a slightly different direction. Let's see what we get.
Well, rather uneventful, but still good morning out. Good way to start the day regardless. Bit of salt here. Many birds, by birds. Quails in front of a truck. Come on, out of the way. There we go. So yeah, pretty uneventful day fishing, I guess. Two small snapper that, um, you know, if you stretched them might have been legal, but uh, not ones that I wanted to take anywhere. This will be interesting. She's about to hit an island. Go. No idea what that person was doing. Spatial awareness seems to be genuinely lacking in some people. Spatial and situational awareness, I think it's two um, extremely undervalued things, you know. Like Ranger. Um, situational awareness, just being aware of what's going on around you and I mean, it all kind of gets turned into this, or can get turned into this tactical term or philosophy, but really it's just like staying in the moment and being aware of what's actually happening around you, whether it's the traffic going on around you, people entering or exiting a room, animals, things you're about to run into, just stuff just being in the moment and just being aware of what's going on and then spatial awareness which is your relationship to the world which then extends out to the vehicle you're in the fishing line you're holding um, I had an interesting realization recently I was talking to my little girl about it as being aware of the fishing rod because she was sort of swinging around and didn't hit anybody but there was a few near misses and she was oblivious to it and I said to her, you, you just need to make the fishing rod or think of the fishing rod as an extension of your body. And it occurred to me, I did like kendo, which is the Japanese sword fighting. So I spent quite a few years having that drilled into me. So maybe it's not as a normal or a natural thing as, as I might think. But um, yeah, same as a uh, anyone doing martial art with any kind of weapon very quickly understands that, that that needs to become an extension of your arm, of your body, and you become aware of where that is in relationship to you and your environment, where the tip of that, the, the tip of the sword, now a tip of a fishing rod, end of the barrel. Um, it's just something to be aware of and treated as part of, part of you. And this comes down to firearms and muzzle discipline. Where's your muzzle pointing at every and any point in time? Where's your fishing rod pointing at every any point in time? You know, you're gonna hit somebody or something in the structure or the roof in the garage. Um, yeah. So the other thing that uh, I was kind of saddened by today was the amount of rubbish on the wharf. And it's all fishing rubbish. You know, there's a plastic bait bag. There's quite a few sabiki rig bags, containers picked up a couple of uh, hooks, so scored some hooks and some tackle. There was a massive bag, a uh, ball of uh, line that looks like somebody had pulled up. I mean, we're talking like a hundred or so meters of various lines all in a row. So uh, there's a rubbish bag out there, brim full, which, you know, I guess that's the thing. If you put a rubbish bag out there, people start using it, filling it up gets to the point where no one's going to pick it up to take it back because now it's a full rubbish bag. Um, 
you know, I'll admit I didn't, but I'm tempted next time I go down is take a trolley, see if there's any bags there and just pull them back. Uh, I had a rubbish bag of my own that I put, put a few bits and pieces into. So, you know, it would be very easily, easy to, you know, racially stereotype where that rubbish might be coming from. I guarantee it's a wrong stereotype. And I also have to note that when I got to back to the car park holding a black rubbish bag full of rubbish, that there was a elderly walking group all there with their walking sticks and their one day backpacks and uh, their water bottles and checklists checking everybody in. And within a couple of steps distance to them was an empty Woodstock box, a couple of cans, a couple of bottles. And there would have been oh, 20 people standing around and no one had walked over to pick these things up and put them into a rubbish bag. You know, it's not their responsibility, is it? You know, that they didn't put the rubbish there. But on the sa same angle, maybe we could all accept a little bit of responsibility of keeping this planet clean. clean. And, uh, you know, you don't have to pick it all up. There's guys out there doing that, likes of DTEC. You guys are awesome. You're phenomenal, what you're doing. But maybe the rest of us could just commit to picking up a single bit of rubbish that isn't ours whenever we spot it. And, you know, I mean, if we all did that, the, the country, the planet would be very quickly quite a cleaner place. So, you know, reasonably leave no trace take your rubbish with you maybe take an extra bit of rubbish and we should be good to go anyhow like i said the fishing was pretty uneventful today i'm gonna head back to clevedon now grab myself a coffee maybe a little snack or something and uh, head home then start my day see ya